This one is Kalas Bal. No problem. I will deal with that accordingly. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala al-Mawus rahmatul al-Alamin al-Nabiina wa Habibina Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim ma baad al-yawm sabatashar min shahri jumad al-akhirah alfun wa arbaumiyatin wa khamsatin wa arbaun al-muafiq li ثلاثين من شهر ديسمبر 2023 نواصل درسنا في هذا الكتاب المبارك بلوغ المرام أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يبارك فينا وفيما نتعلمه وأن يغفر لنا الزلات ويغفر للمؤلف ويرفع درجته في العليين So بإذن الله عز وجل we continue from where we start and today we will be dealing with a new chapter which is كتاب السبق السبق uh, so it's part of the Kitab al-Jihad, it's a babun al-sabki wal-rami, it's part of the Kitab al-Jihad. Uh, as-sab, what is as-sab? Racing, yeah, racing and uh, competition. Uh, so wal-rami, rami is archery. So this is a tattoo that we'll be discussing uh, both, um, whether it is permissible for a person to do that, is not permissible Islamically for a person to go for archery and, and also a siba, a racer. Qala an Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu anhu qala sabaqa al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bil khayli allati qad dummirat min al-hafiyai wa kana amaduha thaniyat al-wada' wa sabaqa uh, وسابق uh, بين الخيل التي لم لم تضمر من الثنية إلى مسجد بني زريق وكان ابن عمر في من سابق عبد الله بن عمر said رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أخطأت و يعني وثقت ب أنا غير الأبد فقال لي أبد كمان بطيء Okay, so Abdullah bin Umar said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa permissible to do the competition because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did uh, the competition. And uh, this tadmir, qala an tu'alaf hatta tasmul, thumma la tu'alaf, illa qutaha li takhiffa. He says, uh, what is tadmir? Tadmir is to keep on feeding uh, the animal, the horse, or whatever you're feeding, keep on giving them food. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, until they become so fat. And then you stop giving them the food, you become very moderate, accept what it needs, so that the body will become stable, come back to uh, stability, the normal uh, size, healthy, uh, normal, not hungry, and also strong at the same time. So this is uh, the khayl al Well, al this is the one that they don't go into this uh, process. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sabaq al-bayna al-khayl al-lati, 
لم تضمر من الثانية إلى قد ضمرت من الحفياء وكان أمدها ثانية الوداع. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم arranged the race between a khayl that went through this process, you know, any khayl that is according to this nature. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم told them, you racing. The race should start from this place until that place. قال من الحفياء إلى مسجد إلى ثانية الوداع. الحفياء مكان خارج المدينة. It's a place out of outside Medina. قال وكان أمدها ثانية الوداع. And it begins from حفياء until ثانية الوداع. ثانية الوداع is a place. It's a place where usually people say the farewell to their guest or the the person among the family members who is traveling. You know, we accompany them to sometimes to the airport and then we we leave them. So in Medina they have a place which is called Thaniyat al Wada. This place is a place where usually we say farewell to to the musafir. That's why it is called Thaniyat al Wada. Get it? Uh, this is. Uh, I, think, I think everyone remembers the same word, right? Even if you don't want to know, it's because of this share. And you will ask about have a bait. This bait, is it uh, Sahih? No, it is not authentic. Based on the Senate of narration, it's not authentic. So there is no evidence for anyone who wants to legalize uh, the use of musical instrument in this hadith because it is not even authentic. He got it. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came also, and secondly, he did not even, you know, he did not come from Thaniyatul Wada. When he was back from Tabuk, he came from Thaniyatul Wada. Not when he is coming from the Makkah to Medina. So those, I mean, complete horses, strong horses. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told the Hafiya ila Thaniyatul Wada. You get it. So it's. It's a big meal. It's just one mile. Yeah, because those ones are not strong enough. If you exhaust them, what will happen? You will lose them. That's why in the in the past they have also the barid, the post people, postman. You know. Uh, nowadays, Alhamdulillah, we have the cars, airplanes, and all of these fast uh, things. You know. uh, uh, post large you right. <laughs> And uh, so we have all of these uh, nowadays. In the past, they also have, right? They also have. But what they do is, for instance, they want a letter to reach, uh, to reach, let's say, Jehovah, right? So they will have horses at the, the Kailai, that area, Nilai. Okay? They have horses at Nilai and uh, or Sram, Sambang. Yeah? They have horses at Sambang. So it moves from Gambak to Sambang. When it reaches somebody, it gives another one, new horse, already rested. Yeah? It moves to somewhere. I don't want to see. I don't know the place. Somewhere around uh, between Malacca and uh, and Samba. there are other horses also there. So it will receive the letters from them to Malacca, from Malacca to I don't know what next, you know. And then there we go. In every every place they have a transit, so that they will not exhaust the horses. Otherwise, if they do, the horse is his animal. We just collapse and that's it. The wisdom says in al Mumbatta. That is the completion of the wisdom. In al Mumbatta. Even the hadiths you forgot. So what, what, do you, what do you think about wisdom? 
لان المبتع لا ظهر ابقى ولا ارضا قطع هو يسال person who doesn't want to rest and keep on penetrating the distance throughout the night on a journey doesn't want to rest he wants to reach his destination as quickly as possible he forgot that he is using animals animals also need to rest so at the end of the day the horse collapsed and died he lost the horse so they said in al-mubatta la dhahar an abqa you know he neither kept his horse alive nor did he manage to reach his uh, destination get the idea that's why the tarayyuf you know tarayyuf is good uh, tarayyuf is good trying to do uh, uh, some a uh, wise way in a way you would not uh, lose at the at the end. so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam led those horses that are uh, full enough and they have st uh, strength and power to go about five to six miles and those that uh, did not go through this process the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam let them do the race within a mile well hadith dalil on the shari'at al musabaqa wa annahu laysa min al abathi bal min al riyadati so the hadith shows that musabaqa is is okay is fine and it's not uh abath game or playing uh use this kind of uh, plays bal min al riyadati al mahmuda al musila ila tahsid al maqasid fi al ghazu wal intifa'i biha fi al jihad so it is part of the exercises that is praiseworthy by the sharia the one that lead to the preservation of the objectives of sharia in jihad you know in jihad what is the objective of jihad protection of the muslim community and the religion in general you get it that's why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says wa laysa min allah illa illa thalas muslim so i don't want to uh, want the muslim to spend his life in play but at the same time also we have we have games we have things you know it's good to do so let's allow some told bani arfida uh, he told them to increase their, their game you know so that the jew will know that we do have a break in our religion not like what they claim to be their religion which is not that you have to isolate yourself from others we don't have that if a break we can you know so let's allow some also said well it's in allah illa thalas a game that islam you know insignificant among all of these kind of games and uh, things you do to enjoy only three are okay only three are okay some of us here qualifies the three and uh, many of us Allah, he, you know, <laughs> number one he says archery yeah you shoot in them and i guess trying to learn how to and number two is horse track and number three no you want to put yourself inside <laughs> number three is what no uh but I want to see it. and he was saying very silent yeah, so try to get involved uh, a person playing with his wife yeah these are the things that should be recognized so try whenever the professor also recommend something to get all of them not some swimming and some other things that you mentioned we got them from some other other places but in this hadith in particular rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned three the archery the racing and the person playing with this with his wife but imagine even in that you will love this religion of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is full of mercies but even in that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward a person when he put happiness in the life of his family <laughs> So all of these type of games, they are going around either istihba, recommendation, or permissibility, either halal or mustahab. قال القرطبي رحمه الله لا خلاف في جواز المسابقة على الخيل وغيرها من الدواب وعلى الأقدة. القرطبي says there is no contradiction amongst the scholars, no no خلاف, no اختلاف. No controversy among the scholars concerning the permissibility of musabaqa on horses, right? وَغَيْرِهَا And other than horses, uh, from the animals, and also وَعَلَى الْأَقْنَى Also to run, using the feet. وَكَذَلِكَ التَّرَامِ بِاسْتِحَامِ وَاسْتِعْمَالِ الْأَصْلِحِ So we can use 
also the archery and also any type of weapons for you know, self in this regard is is good. Yeah, this because uh, it's like to be defended. Need to be defended. I don't know why some people feel shy of talking about this defense. No government on earth, to my knowledge, with doesn't have security. Why, when Rasulullah uh, took security, it's an issue. Yeah, and if they are, if in that time they need security and they need to defend the country, in our time we need, because we have a lot of injustice and people who think that they own you. They have to come to and take over your country. Imagine if the country doesn't have any any jish. Every country you go, they have their own army, they have police, they have all types of securities to make sure that the interest of the country is being preserved. That's what jihad is all about, actually. The one that we, we are shy of mentioning it nowadays, but he been there. That's what it is all about. Yeah, defense system to make sure that the country and the religion of Allah SWT has been preserved. So anything that helps to strengthen this uh, department Islam promoted as long as it is. It is not uh, impermissible in the area of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So competitions, the army competitions, this one is okay. It's okay bi'idhullahi azza wa jalla. Lima fi dhalika amina taddirru bi'ala al-harbi wa fihi dhalilu ala jawazi tadmir al-khayri al-mu'adda tali al-jihadi wa qila inna wa yustahab. We learn that that process of preparing the horses is also mustahab, according to some scholars. Wa ala al-aqal it's permissible for a person to feed it so much and then come back and take it to that level of stability. So we learn from this that this type of competitions are okay, right? This type of competitions are okay. and Abdullah ibn Umar and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sabaqa bayn al-khayri wa faddal al-qurraha fil ghaya. Abdullah ibn Umar said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arranged and organized the sibaq, the competition between the khuyul wa faddal al-qurraha. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also he favored al-qariha. And this is the complete, you know, the complete kind of horses. Just like the way they said al-bazil fil ibl. Complete, healthy, you know, the full one, the one that has strength and, and full energy. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faddalahum fil ghayah. So he favored this one to be uh, bring forward, you know, before any, any other one. He wants the race to do, I mean, to be uh, between these ones. And also he added, he increased the, the, the distance. When it is this type of horses, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam usually increased the distance. I guess the previous had also support this one, right? Because he's a bin al-hafiyah, min al-hafiyah ila, thanit al-wada. Yeah, for the one that are, that are good. وفيه مثل الذي قبله دليل على مشروع السباق بين الخير وأنه يجعل غاية القرح أبعد من غاية ما دونها لقوتها وجلالتها. That's what I have just mentioned. Uh, the full horse, horses, the قارح. We we make the غاية. غاية means the distance. We make it more than than the other than the other ones because they can they can handle because they can handle. قال وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا سبق إلا في خف أو نصل أو حافة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said لا سبق and هكذا تقرأ سبق ليس السبق لا سبق إلا إلا في خف أو نصل أو حافة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said لا سبق La sabaka, sabaka is referring to, to the a sabaka, this is the reason itself, you know, the competition itself running. So you see the Arabic language, right? Little uh, difference will, uh, will make big, huge difference. Yeah, that's why pronunciation in our language matters a lot. Yeah, the way you pronounce the thing. Yeah, it might be in the same way. You call it in the way he's cut in the next one. He said that that is the person who killed himself. Uh, how did he kill himself? By reading incorrectly. He read the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Habbat al-Sawda, shikaa min kulli 
So he removed the, the dot. He read it al to Sauda. Black snake is medicine for everything. They said he went and looked for black snakes out of the trust of the hadith of the Prophet. He got the black snake and ate. And uh, he said, uh, between, sometimes you change, I mean, you change the, the haraka, it will be uh, like the, the distance between the heavens and the earth. Al Malak wal Malik. Malak, Malik. What is the difference between the heavens and the earth? Because one is in the, <laughs> the heavens, that's the angel, and the other one is on the earth, Malik. That one is Malak. So learn when you're reading Arabic language to read correctly. That's why I, I propose to you, if you buy books, for those of you who are serious in learning, buy the one that doesn't have the the, shak, the harakat. Buy the normal one. Because for the sake of business, they went and do the harakat, and they give non-experts to do the harakat. And sometimes they might just, they just give him because he's an Arab person. And that's wrong, very wrong. Very, very wrong. Being an Arab doesn't mean he, that that person knows what to do. At all, at all. But subhanAllah, for the sake of business, we do that. And sometimes even if he knows the Arabic language, but we need to know how was it pronounced by the muhaddithin when they married him. That's why you see here, when he wants you not to make a mistake, what did he tell? Because he's a muhaddith. This is what they took from their scholars, right? And you see from time to time, he will tell you, بِفَتْحِ السِّينِ الْمُهْمَلَةِ السِّينِ الْمُهْمَلَةِ يعني أَحْسَ الشِّينِ شِينِ is المُعْجَمَة you know, السِّينِ الْمُعْجَمَة you know, that means it has a dot on, on top of it. So he tells you what type of uh, is this sheen or sheen? You already know by that. And he said, Fatha. You get it? Because he doesn't want you to put sukun. He said, the ba al muahada. Muahada means the one that has only one nukta. Because if you put muthanat uh, tahti, uh, that's the gap. You know, two dots. Yeah, so you need to know all of these things. You know, if you're not an uh, expert in the hadith, how do you know? That's why the scholar said, be very careful when you buy books that carries tahqiq on them. Yeah, tahqiq, right? They will tell you. Be very careful. You really need to be very careful because sometimes they increase the, the price unnecessarily. They corrupt the book and they increase the price because of the tahqiq. I think he suffers from a lot of these, uh, these type of people. Um, my friend bought a book. Whenever he wants us to laugh, he will share with you some of the things he got from this book. Somebody does a tahqiq, you know, subhanAllah, tasawwar. Hatta Shaykh al-Islam bin Taymiyyah akhta. Even Shaykh al-Islam bin Taymiyyah, he made a mistake in giving the tarjum to him. So we realize that this guy, if he said Abu Abdullah, any Abu Abdullah he sees, the first Abu Abdullah that comes in the books of the Rajab, he will just. And you have the Ibn Laboon guy. Ibn Laboon, you know, Ibn Laboon is a camel, right? He's a camel. Ibn Laboon is a camel. What is Ibn Laboon? It's a baby camel that the mother has another younger one breastfeeding the younger one. Laboon, meaning the mother is giving Laban to the younger one. Okay? The one before this younger one, we call him Ibn Laboon. We call it Ibn Laboon. So it's animal. This guy who was making tahqiq, he came underneath and he wrote like this after strong search and checking everywhere. Unfortunately, I couldn't find tarjama, any biography for this person. <laughs> and the sower, you pay, you pay a lot of money for this guy. Yeah, because they wrote uh, the first part of the book that there is a tahqiq for somebody. Yeah, so that's why a student of knowledge, don't be so happy when you see the tahqiq, unless if this tahqiq is coming from a real student of knowledge. Yeah, real student of knowledge. Jamaat al-Islamiyah used to do a very wrong thing, very, very big wrong thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them. Any yeah, wrong thing, not sin, not committing sin, but wrong thing in terms of approach, because every year, the students are supposed to provide a research, final year research. 
And subhanAllah, very good research the students are doing. And sometimes what they do is they just give you the book like this and they divide the book. They're supposed to go and do the tahqiq. Everyone will do the tahqiq. And when we pass it, we get a result, uh, I mean, marks for that. And then after that, the university will collect it and put it in a place. After a few months or a few years, they take it to the most important level. One of our scholars was saying this is a waste of energy that the university doesn't want to understand because they're supposed to look into those researches and get the good ones. You know, they, they construct a legna, you know, committee to study what the student did. So how long they could produce a lot of books and then we don't need to go for these uh, business guys whose, you know, objective is none other than getting money. Do you, do you get an idea? Because that one is accurate because they are doing it for marks. They know that if they don't do it, the lecturer reads. Yeah, it's not about... Uh, what we do nowadays, you know, the lecturers read there. They read what you're, what you're saying. Again, so if they're reading, they're going to pass you uh, based on this or fail you if you don't qualify. That means you're going, we're going to end up having a very good research and very good tahqiq for many, many books. But imagine since the university was constructed, if this had been done, how many books now we produce? A lot. A lot. So that's why if you can have access to those maqadir of UI, it's good to get those uh, those ones and come up with, yeah? In the it's, it they have a telegraph book? They have now. The Bahus themselves or the... The books that they share with these Bahus from the uh, Jamia itself? Uh, no, the Bahus from the students or the Bahus from the Jamia itself? Okay, that would be good. That would be great, inshallah. I need to know this uh, telegraph group. Because what I know is Jamia I used to have a matba printing complex. They said in Khalid Jewel and Khalid at that time is the best. But negligence, yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them. You printed some books, you know, very good quality printing. But uh, you know. So what I was trying to say is to be very uh, careful when you uh, uh, buy books, buy the one that doesn't have the shirt. Otherwise, you will be pronouncing something incorrectly and you will give the translation incorrectly. Right. Uh, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says there is, no competi and, uh, there is no competition with reward that is permissible Islamically except the competition that was done with khuf or hafir or nasli. You know, these are the three uh, things the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam allows us to do. So Khuf uh, is the is the camels, right? Hafir, this is the horses. Yeah, these are the hoofs, the legs and the foot of that, those ones. So the camel one, we call it khuf. The, ha the hafir, this is the the horses, right? The hoofs of the horse, we call it hafir. And nasl, this is the saham, the archery. So that means horse riding, uh, camel riding, and the archery. These are the only thing that the Prophet Sallallahu recognizes, and it is permissible for a person to put a reward. Okay, Brahma, bring your horse, I bring mine. Okay, if you win, 10,000 ringgit. If I win, I get you 10,000. Well, hadith dalin ala jawaz al Musa al sibaq ala ju'ul. Fa'in kala ju'ul min ghayr al mutasabiqina kal imami ij'alhu li sabiq halla bila khilafin. Fa'in kala min ahari al mutasabiqina lam hilla li. This is the only one that uh, in, in, the, in these three things, it is okay for a person to put the jawl. Okay, the jawl, even if it is from the ahadu, al al one of them. Yeah, as for other than these three things, and whatever is related to them, because they, they also did qiyas, to these ones, any military exercises they are doing, it is okay for them to make it. You put joy. It is okay to put joy. But other than these ones, if the reward is coming from, the prize is coming from somebody else, then it's okay. But if the prize is coming from other than, uh, I mean, from one of these, uh, from one of the participants, then it will be Kima. You get it? Even if this is competition of the Quran or Hadith. Because nowadays competition also you have to pay for you to join. That's Qimar. I have no doubt this is Qimar. 
Yeah, there are some scholars who are saying it's okay because Quran brings uh, what they call ruh and haya. And it's subhanAllah, actually, we, we even have to be very careful because we train people nowadays to memorize for the, for the competition. She, she and Kids are memorizing because of competition. And that's very dangerous. Now we are removing the class from the heart. You get it? They are memorizing because of the competition. Why? Because, and the competition also is corrupt nowadays. You Allah. In every sense, you know, one, the one who wins is not the one who is given. In many places, it also involves uh, politics. You have to be part of them for you to win. Yeah, we have seen this. And also in some places, also the organizers, also their business, they are man, looters and corrupt thieves also. I know people personally who join the competition, they said whoever is given an envelope, and it is mentioned that we give you 1,000, when they went back home and they opened the 500 only, all of them. Is it, is it a mistake? No, it's not. If it is with one person, you can understand, yes, it might be a mistake, but all? Yeah, why are they doing this? Because they know usually when you are given the thing, you will not open right on the spot. Yeah, you open later. And you can't come to them and claim. So, Allah salam al So, from the beginning, asking them to pay money to join so that they can win. Why are they paying? Why are they paying? Because they want to win. That's Qimar. Why do you differentiate between this one and the other one? So, the Sibak that can only involve uh, uh, money being paid is only when you are doing it with these three things. Yeah? If the intention is for the sake of jihad. Not for the funny things that they do nowadays, you know, because it's not what they have, it's just wasting time. So we have to be very careful. That one has a purpose, and the scholars mentioned the wisdom and the reason why and the illa behind this. If that illa is missing, the hukum also will be will be missing. How about the football tournaments that you guys are doing? Practicing running. I know I'm not going to I know I'm not I'm just amazed with how much you know confidence you have. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I really believe that you're uh, you're serious, you know. And I'm just seeing your confidence very strong. Uh, football. So all of those uh, Ronaldo and who they are all mujahidun, <laughs> getting ready for jihad. Right? I'm not. I'm uh, just talking to Abdurrahman. Don't don't tell me I'm not taking you seriously, Yusuf. <laughs> those are just game, Yusuf. In the first place, even the game itself also is question. The way people are doing it, you know, just like exactly like they want to that kids. This is very nice and very beautiful, but this is Jaheed. Very young boy. That journalist, I think he made a mistake when he talked to him during the Qatar uh, thingy. He talked to the boy, and the boy is also there. He talk, uh, talked to the boy. What do you think about that? He says, yeah, very beautiful, but this is Jaheed. Yeah, the way he's, he's the, the, the un-Islamic things, you know, which no doubt that these things are against the religion of Allah SWT. Call it Jahid. These are kids. I like their comments because they're very honest. It is not influenced by anything. They will tell you what they believe in. You know, that's why he called it Jahid. So first of all, in itself, it's okay to play football. Halal, halal. It's not wrong with football. As long as we're going to do it correctly. The brothers are not supposed to play uncovering their thighs. That's how. Because according to the best opinion of the scholars, and Fakidu Allah, not wearing something that is tight. You get it? Not advertising wine and all of these bad companies. If they happen to advertise somebody, it should be something that is halal Islam. Yeah, you cannot wear wine companies or prostitution companies or whatever. So, and they do it also when the adhan is being made, they stop. And go. 
as we know football. Uh, we want to make it, we make it in the daylight, you know, after the whole, for instance. So after Maghrib, right after that, that comes this stuff. Go and pray and come back and, and finish. Design it in the way they have two, two parts, right? Yeah, the, the first part finish when the other comes. The second one finish, uh, the, will, will start when the, the prayer is all over, right? Yeah. For the Muslim, they go and pray. Then come back with your game. Yeah, as long as there is no ikhtilat. No ikhtilat. I don't know how. I'm just putting these conditions. No ikhtilat. No haram things. Uh, football is, is halal. You need to remain halal until the day of judgment. When you put haram thing inside, then whatever you're doing also will be rejected Islam. So that money that the, that the team is paying and the other team also is paying and the winner will take, what do you call that? Himar. Himar. Yeah. It has to be friendly or the price should come from somebody else. Yeah, they can do. Uh, one of the government is just uh, handle, you know? The prize is from us. And the team doesn't don't pay anything. Yet it's nobody's paying on their behalf. No, they don't pay anything. Just somebody is buying the prize, you come and join. You can come with the intention of getting the prize. No problem. As long as somebody is handling the prices. You get it? So all of these things we have to be very careful. How about sometimes you receive a message to buy credit, then you join a competition that you can win. 5,000 ringgit, for instance. Is it Kemar or not Kemar? Kemar as well. How about open an account with us? Then you are joining a competition to win. Is it Kemar? Kemar also. How about uh, that, that kind of uh, marketing? Yeah, buy something, then you become a member with us. The moment you introduce another person, we give you a prize. But you cannot join until you pay. You buy something from us. Yeah, we have to be very careful in this. How about the calling cards? Alhamdulillah, in your time, you don't have it, but a little bit behind, they used to have the calling cards. I don't know whether they still exist or not, but in the past, they have these cards. You see, when I call uh, back home, every any one ringgit or two ringgit, you spend in one minute. But if you use those ones, I can buy 20 ringgit and spend one hour. Real thing, no legal thing. I don't know what exactly are they use it, but you you buy you use their own way. You can spend one hour talking back home. So what happens is sometimes you use the car. You know, you know that you have one hour. You just call for five minutes. The next time when you are calling, uh, when you call it, then it tells you you have only twenty minutes or ten minutes. Why right? the balance of the minutes that you have? Where where did it go? I talked to somebody who has this uh, companies. So lost me, I lost my home, and I guide him and protect him. What exactly happened? You know, I heard one of the scholars saying this is gambling. I couldn't digest because he just said gambling and he keeps he keeps price. So I tried to understand where is the gambling. I couldn't see. But then when this uh, brother came and he explained to me, I told him, Allah, he's like, oh, yeah. you have made life easy for me. Now I understand what that sheikh was talking. So he told me that what they're doing is I'm the one of the company, so I use the proxy, uh, Hamad's company, right? So the cooperation between me is uh, and, and Hamad, uh, between me and Hamad only. Adam and Abdurman also they have their own company, they can act as a, a proxy for me, but I don't have, I don't have any agreement with them. But the gateway is open, I can just use it at any time I want. So I will use Hamad. Sometimes Hamad has problems. I cannot use that one. For me to keep the, the customers, I will divert the call to Abdurrahman. And Abdurrahman is going to charge the normal charges. You get it? Already get this story. No problem. And then that's also already to go back to the old age. Ah, this, is, this is during your tenure. Uh, this is your name, Faza, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think we stand to. Huh? Well, I, uh, who is the Mushkila? You said you are also part of the Mushkila, right? Because this is Sharika, right? <laughs> yeah, anyway, so what I was I saying? So when they divert the call to Abdurrahman's company, Abdurrahman is going to charge the normal charges. 
That's why the credit I have all finished. So I ask him, if this happens, because I know if I use Cellcom and DG, if the way is blocked, they will just tell me I cannot make the call, I should try and tell. It's as simple as this, right? They will not cheat, they will just tell me I should try later. But this one, he said, no, to keep the customer with us, we don't want the customer to be disappointed. I told him, great, nice. But are you informing the customer that you're going to divert the call to somebody else who will charge the normal price? He said, no, because if you tell them, they will not come. So what do you call that? Deception and cheating. And also what happens is everyone is trying to get uh, the best profit. You as the one who buy, you're trying to get as much as you, you can. Because sometimes even if they tell you one hour, trust me, sometimes it goes to two hours. Like that. As long as you're going to use that one, it will keep going. Two hours. That was the time, six hours, actually. Like that. So sometimes you get, sometimes you don't get. This is what gambling is. It's all about. That's why that, that's what I was saying. This is gambling. So we have to be very careful. What we, what we need to know is the definition of gambling. What is gambling? When you have two people participating, one of them is paying something and the other one is paying also something and the winner will take it. When there is a winner and there is a loser, we call it what? Gambling. When there is a winner and there is a loser, the one who wins will take the prize, all the monies, then this is gambling. Except if the money is coming from a third party. You get the idea? Except if the money is coming from a third party. And that's the reason why also the scholars mentioned that insurance in all of its forms is impermissible with the exception of the carful. And what is the carful? Takaful is not the company that we know. No, Takaful has its own meaning. What is the meaning of Takaful? Takaful means cooperation, right? Solidarity. Me and Hamad and Abdurrahman, you know, we realize that we're going to have problem in our life as usual, human beings and human beings. We agree to save from our salaries, right? Every month we pay something, we keep it in an account. When uh, Hamad got a problem, we take from that money, settle his case. When Abdurrahman has an issue, we take from that money. When I have an issue, we take from that money. So who is the owner of the money? Us. Yeah, if you look at the Takaful nowadays that we call Takaful, it's not like that. It's not. That is a company who owns the money, and this is not correct. The owner of the money is the participant, the sure cap. That company is an, is an employee. We pay him the money for the job he's doing. He's not the one who will decide what to do with the money. The decision is our decision. Right? So if they invest that money, whatever profit they get, it comes back to the capital itself. It is our money increasing. It is our money increasing. That's the real capital which is passed by by the school. However, if you look at the current practice, although we call it Islamic insurance, but if you go deeper, you'll see none other than a conventional kind of insurance, but in the name of you know, Islam. So you have to be very careful and know what you're doing. Sometimes you go and pay a lot of money, Thinking that you're doing it's not, but in reality you're not. You will lie. That's why you have to be very careful. If both of them are doing the same thing, but one of them calls itself Islam and the other one doesn't, which one is easy? Which one is better? The conventional one, because at least they don't cheat. Because it's not easy to use the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and cheat. That's why they tell you we're not doing, they don't even tell, uh, call themselves halal idea. So be very careful. Sometimes you waste your money. I call it waste of money because at the end of the day you're doing the river. Use the minimum. Use the minimum because riba is riba. If you have to do it and there is no way for you to avoid it, those insurance that I warned you about, just use the minimum. Go with the minimum. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you. You will not get into, into trouble. So I, I think we get what we need concerning competitions, right? So please have to be very careful. For people in, uh, in universities and school, I propose friendly games always. Put anything. Yeah, it's just friendly games, you know. Enjoy. Even if you have some prizes, somebody should handle that. Or you look for a sponsor. To sponsor the prizes, and then you go out of this controversy of the scholars, if there is even controversy on the matter. Yeah, this is the issue of the muhallid. You know, 
if I told Hamad, I do competition with you, you pay 10 ringgit, I pay 10 ringgit, the winner will take it. What is that? Come on. Right? So Rasulullah said, if you put a third horse, you know, and you don't have the certainty of, uh, you know, this, uh, what do you call, uh, the forest to be defeated, this is Kimar, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is he talking about? He's talking about that qadiyat al that we do. Hamad is an expert, I'm an expert in the game we are going to do. And we pay money, he pays money, I pay money. You get it? So, uh, Adam will tell me this is Kimar. What you're doing is Kimar. He said, no problem. We bring up the money. Abdurrahman is not going to pay anything. I pay, he pays. But Abdurrahman, the condition is he shouldn't pay anything. Uh, and also, the second condition is that if Abdurrahman wins, he takes both monies, my money and his money. And at the first, Abdurrahman did not pay anything. They call it Muhallid. They call him Muhallid. Most of the scholars legalize this, based on this hadith, but the hadith is weak. That's why even Al-Qayyim, he has, he has a book called Al-Furusiyya. Very good book that talks about this competition and Sibak and very interesting. Uh, so in this book, he says, this is wrong. You call it game being played by some scholars. Yeah, well, this, he said, this is wrong. This is a joke. It's still came off. So the conditions, about, according to the majority, is that Abdurrahman, this is what the Hadith is talking about. Abdurrahman has to be an expert at my capacity or his capacity or better than both of us. Because usually what they do, since the majority says it's halal, they will bring a third person, Abdurrahman, coming from somebody that's me, he doesn't know how to play football. So, <laughs> so, so we put him inside because we know Abdurrahman in that game is insignificant. Would you do hukadimu? You get an idea? If we wish, he might not be able to touch the ball. Just there. Like a, like a rock, you know, not knowing how to play. But we put him inside to legalize what we are doing. This is what the Prophet said, it is still came up because Abdurrahman's existence in, in that game is equal to non existence because we already know who we Is that clear? Yeah, so it has to be in the way you bring somebody that you're not sure yeah? you will win or he will win. And the possibility of him winning is very high then it is okay according to the vast majority of the scholars. However, as I said, it will dismantle this. And also, you know, the fact that this hadith is weak, then it remains, even if you have a third person, as long as I pay, and my competitor also is paying, this is qimar, right? It has to come from one person. Get it? One uh, person, according to some scholars, even if it is from one person, you know, that better, better than the one person, many scholars also rejected uh, this. Ibn Qayyim legalized it, if I'm not mistaken, only when it is for the purpose of jihad and defense. That's it. So it, it means it's better to look for another person to sponsor. Because if uh, Hamad puts the thing and I win, trust me, he's not going to be happy. He's not going to be happy. But if they are doing the competition and I'm the one who put the prize, and one of them wins, yeah, I already sacrificed that, that prize. And I know one of them is going to win. I'm not going to be sad. I will be happy for this one and help that one in his sadness. And even if he's sad, is he going to get attitude and get angry and fight back? No, because he did not lose anything. You get it? Uh, one of the reasons why gambling and kemar is prohibited is because it uh, brings... Uh, what do you call enmity and hatred amongst the Muslims? All of the hadiths of this Bible are from Abdullahi ibn Umar. Right? ibn Amir, radiallahu anhu, qala sami'tu Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ahu ala al minbari, yaqulu wa a'iddu lahum masata'atun min qu, wa min ribat al khayli. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the believers to prepare for the enemies, you know, any strength. You know, and also the, especially the Quyud that were provided for the Rivat and Jihad peace and healing. So Allah SWT says, أَعِدُّ لَهُمْ مَسْتَفَعَةُ مِنْكُمْ He asked us to prepare for meeting the enemy. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, أَلَا إِنَّ قُوَّةَ أَحْرَمِ 
Allah in the Quota Aram, Allah in the Quota Aram. As soon as the Soma said, you have to know that the Kuwa, the Allah Smart says, why I do the home in Quota, or maybe Babu, must have out to mean Kuwa. Kuwa, the Allah Smart is referring to here is Arami. What is Arami? Archery, shooting with the arrows and the spear. Why is it important? Because a person can kill from far distance. You don't need to meet your enemy and face to face him next to him, right? Uh, so the, 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 the Prophet said this. That's why he says in one hadith, he says, Warmu, Warkabu, Wantarmu, Ahabu, Ilayimin, and Takabu. He says, uh, shoot the arrows and ride horses, because these are the best in terms of jihad and defense. Shooting and horse riding, yeah, because a horse rider can do a lot of things which a normal person cannot can do. Because those horses also are trained to know how to contribute to the to the battle, to fight and to go against the enemies and to be a patient in going through the the, the army of the, the enemies. That's why you remember we talk about the the portion given to the those people who are using the horses. How many we give them three, right? So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Irmu warkabu." He says, "Shoot and all ride horses." Wa antarmu habu ilayya min antarkabu. But I prefer seeing you shooting with the arrows rather than riding horses. Both of them are praise praiseworthy, but the first one, according to this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is shooting with with the arrows. Yeah, because simply the risk. Is at the minimum, right? The risk is at the, at the minimum. May Allah grant us uh, good and tawfiq. At the end of the, the book of uh, jihad, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. And uh, we have how many how many volumes left? Yeah, I think this is the last one, right? Yeah, I think uh, to me this is the last one. Yeah. So Alhamdulillah, and this, this journey, I don't know since when it was there, but Allah, one day will complete and move to Nail uh, Lautar. Yeah. Almost similar uh, nature, yeah. Yeah, but you will learn more so from these two scholars from Yemen. Yeah. So the next book is food. So those of you who are interested in eating, shall, should we miss our class? Uh, subsequently, inshallah. I like that too good. If there is any question, please uh, come up with it. No question. Sheikh. So if we have to choose between an Islamic bank and uh, just another Kafir bank, do we go with the Kafir bank? Islamic bank or Muslim bank? Well, you know, it's... I'm just, I'm just asking to see. <laughs> they, they engage in conventional banking, but they have the name Islam or whatever. So is there no point to banking if, with them? If you check and see that this bank, whatever bank is that, they are not doing the correct Islamic things. They are doing exactly what the uh, conventional banks are doing. There is no difference between them. Actually, the conventional banks are banking with them. I have no doubt in this. They are not doing the Islam, they are doing the, the, the conventional thing, but in the name of Islam, the conventional one of the Islam. Because they don't use Islam. It's very difficult and, and very sensitive matter to use Allah and you don't do the correct thing. Would you suggest that we bank with I would not like suggest HSBC, anyone. for I example? Not, I would not suggest anyone. Okay. Uh, I would not suggest anyone. I believe nowadays because of the circumstance, it's not easy and very dangerous for you to keep your money at home. You have to use that. So look for the best in terms of services that will grant you what you need. The Rura is the one that forces us to go and use those conventional banks or any other bank that calls itself Islam but is not doing the Islamic thing. The Rura is the one that forces us to do. But the Rura to put the Rubikah that they have. And we take what we need in the Rura cases. So I'm not going to suggest anyone, but I will just tell you, be smart in your choice. Choose the one that has a service that serve the purpose you're looking for. Unfortunately, in many, many, many of those who claim Islamic, you see this, the service is very poor, very poor. 
you face problem with them, you don't face problem with the, the one that says, I'm not doing Islam. But if the, if the conclusion, the result is the same, why would I choose the one that would give it, is going to give me a headache whenever I use it? Why? I use the one that is okay, comfortable, the one that, uh, that leads me to a comfortable life. Because I know both of them are not of me. I'm using them because I have no choice. Because if you do have a choice, you can't use it. Yeah, so we have to be very uh, smart and just check and see what exactly are we doing. Is it Islam or something? Second question, did the rules of archery apply to practicing with firearms? Firearms, uh, guns. Yeah, the guns, right. Mm. Yeah. He's even mentioned this, I don't have time to... And he talks about the archer, and he says he's using fanaticals. al bundaqiyya is the, the, guns, the normal one, but not the sophisticated one that we have nowadays. But uh, we take it from that. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Some question, my sister. What is the ruling in buying something that the seller read some verses or dua and the likes over the item, even if the buyer knows it's not from the sunnah and it won't have any effect unless Allah wills? Ah, uh, it's okay. Just go to the market and then check what they are doing. Otherwise, you see a lot of <laughs> weird things, you know, in the marketplace. They are reading things on the items and, and the water they sell. You know, it's the water that they say Quran has been completed in it. And they sell, I don't know whether they give cheap price or not, but it is mentioned that they completed Quran. I'm pretty sure this is wrong. Yeah, it's wrong to do that. So we don't pay attention to this. We just go to the marketplace and buy what you need to buy. And that's it. They read Quran, they read the dua, they don't read dua. It's fine. And leave. You know, otherwise, when you check, you're going to get into trouble. Many people have in their shops, you see the ayat being written. As ayah, which you will get to profit a lot if you put it. Uh, Every shop you go, you see this uh, ayat. And he's selling cigarettes, he's selling some uh, things, you know. Just chess. People say that improves the ability to stand. I think they have to they have to do research again. I think there is another research that says these type of things they they just uh, make a person smart in games. But when serious matters comes, they're dumb. Yeah, that's another research. It says these these games. It increases the capacity of the, the brain when it comes to game. But when serious matters comes, uh, I have never heard or read that the army is fighting and the leader was saying according to what we learn in the chess. Never heard about this. But every time they tell us that because it helps you to for the jihad purposes and defense, well, I, I don't know, I don't know. All the training we see them doing, yeah, you must know them uh, playing chess, you know. <laughs> yeah, my, 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 my secondary school is a government school, but in the middle of the military, military park. We see all of these things. I never saw them. I can't remember when I see them even playing chess, you know. <laughs> Get the idea? So somebody will come and tell us that it helps in defense. Well, I, I don't know what this is talking about. So chess is the most of the scholars said is haram to play the chess. And dice is prohibited based on the indication of the hadith of the Prophet. Chess is the one that the hadith has some issues with it, but most uh, the vast majority of the scholars said is it's wrong to play chess. Any game that is related to Abdullah ibn Umar used to pass people who are playing chess and he used to tell them, Ma hadihil asnam antum laha. What are these idols that you you guys are worshiping? Although they don't intend, but it's it's it truly distract a person from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. I have seen this with my own eyes. That the example I gave you earlier, a group of people, you know, and these are teachers in the school. They are playing chess, and the karma has been made. Allah, one of them says, uh, the other one says, let's go and pray. They said, no, it's, 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 
I remember that one. Was said the command of Allah and the Salah. How many games we have that are halal? Millions. But you know, the soul is always thinking of the, the controversial one, the doubtful one. So we avoid the chess. Even if, the least you can say about chess is the is shubha. Even if you don't go for haram, the least you can say about it is shubha. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised you to stay away from shubha. When I, when I mentioned this, brother spoke to me that if you use the same basis on which chess has been banned, you can also ban pretty much every other board game and you can ban it. So, what is uh, we tell them what Sharia says, and the scholars uh, source from the Sharia, and they ban something. We stick. What Sharia did not ban, uh, did not ban it. We say it is halal, unless if it distracts you from the last one then it is impermissible. Football is halal. When the football is going to, inter I mean, uh, uh, to be played at the time of the prayer, that football is halal. When the football has uh, free mixing, that football is halal. When the football has uh, what do you call our being, uh, not being covered, that football, that uh, football is haram. And the same goes to any. I will tell him this. Actually, you were right. Any game that contains this, this game is impermissible. It's not. But this one in particular, we reject them from the root from day one because that is some source of the Sharia of the Muslim that says we, should, we shouldn't do. Uh, can we generalize? No, we don't generalize, but the objective and the illa, if it does exist in something else, we also apply the same concept. Any game that a person is doing, if it is good to distract him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that game will be, will be influenced. Uh, concerning maqasil and jihad, now in the month we have, actually it's that question is not so Should I close my ears? Okay. Yes, uh, you know, nowadays we have pinball and BB gun. Pinball, it's like uh, you, you, it's like a uh, you know they, they give you guns and it's like an actual ball, but the gun is like a pink gun and a BB gun is another one. It's like a gun. So like it's not real bullets, actually plastic bullets. So now people who go to this place, what are you guys think? They they actually like it's actually like a real battle. Uh -huh. So now does it count? Does it count as like that something actually? Yeah. Because it's it's a simulation of like a, a real battle. I don't think they go that for this, right? They just go that for just giving themselves. What is your intention? No, what's your intention? <laughs> Mushtaq, but can can we make the ask? When they have the, the intention, then they join the army. <laughs> That's the real one. <laughs> yeah, these are all games and competitions. Yeah, that are supposed to be uh, free or if. Somebody can pay the price, somebody else who is not involved in the game. And, you know, nowadays, technology is not advanced. So now you have, in, now in, in jihad, you might have uh, uh, cyber security involved. Uh, how do you call it? Uh, something to do with IT, like, you know, jihad concerning cyber security and like hacking and all that stuff. Hacking things. Uh, and now, so does this count? Because anything that it, is related to jihad, but these type of things, you have to be very careful because usually horse riding and all of these things, directly for this, but it depends. But these type of things that you are mentioning, they have other purposes which are much more. You know, the, this uh, cyber security is not only on uh, what you call defense and, and things. It, it's, it is almost everywhere. So we cannot use it. Uh, we cannot use it, you know, in this regard to legalize that sabak. That, that we are talking about in the hadith of the Prophet. Because they are not meant originally for this. They get ideas. Some of these games, they are meant actually for gambling. That's why at the first place, it is not permissible for us to play. Because it is imitation of the gamblers. Although we are doing them free, but they are designed for gamblers and for gambling. If somebody sees me playing them, he will think I'm doing the gambling. And as such, it will be impermissible for me to do it because I'm imitating the wrong, wrong rules. And in Islam, you know, I cannot imitate three people, right? I cannot imitate a woman, cannot imitate a wrong door, and I cannot imitate a kafir. A woman cannot imitate a man. She cannot imitate wrong doers, and she cannot imitate kafir. Yeah, and these are rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're not rights of the individuals. 
Otherwise, the wife can come and say that she will wear the husband's clothes. Why? Because this is I'm just in front of my husband. Is that halal? No, it's not. Because that was right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even between her and the husband, Allah doesn't want her to see it. I mean, doesn't want to see her imitating her. Whatever is designed to address only brothers, it's only for them. Whatever is designed to address only sisters, it's only, only for them. Even if it's, if it's between the husband and, and the wife, they cannot joke around with, with this one. So games which are designed for the purpose of gambling, a Muslim is not supposed to get involved in them, even if we remove the element of gambling. Because others, when they see us, we have to explain to them that we are not gambling. And that's wrong. Uh, I don't have any uh, any tarif straightforward mentioned by the scholars except the fact that jul, يعني السباق بين طرفين بجعل بينهما. سباق بين طرفين بجعل أو على جعل بينهما. الجعل يدعوه كل واحد منهم. هذا هو القيمة. إذا كان الجعل when the jul the jul is the price when it is from somebody else. Then it is not qibar. But when two people they are uh, what do you call competing each other, ala jul min then uh, it is qibar. Whoever wins will get it. This is al qibar. You did fiha rabih wa khas. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashara la ilaha illa anta istaghfiruka wa tubi ilayka. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.